My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been learning vocabulary words out of this book here the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Like I said, we've been working on the vocabulary words from this book from page, chapter number three. Chapter number three. And right now we are on page number 53. Page number 53. Today is our lesson number 25, which is the last day today. Last day of the vocabulary series of HESI, HESI vocabulary words. In addition to the vocabulary words, if you also need help in the math portion of the exam, you will find that we have solved every single math problem that you will find in this book and you will find the solutions to all of those math problems in our math series from day number 1 through 50. If you need more help in math, you will find that the math that, you will in, that one encounters on these is very comparable to what you will encounter on your exam and there are 80 videos in that series that may be of interest to you. In addition to that, there are hundred more videos in the basic series, in the basic math series, where you may learn some stuff over there. Whether or not it is of any use to you is a determination that only you can make. Day number 125, today we'll start with number 136. First word we have is Trauma. Trauma is an injury. It's an injury. It's a wound. It's a shock. Or simply a distressful situation. That's the noun. Trauma is a noun. What's the adjective? Adjective of trauma would be traumatic. What's the adverb? It has two L's in it. Traumatically, it has two L's. Trauma, traumatic, traumatically. Let's move on. Number 137, the next word. Next word that we have here has a very long definition, so we need a lot of room. We need to get rid of all of this. That's the first syllables, and then we have Aj. Aj. Triage. What's a triage? Triage apparently is a process. A process of process of sorting victims as of a battle or a disaster. The disaster could be man-made, could be natural disaster to determine the priority medical treatment with highest priority you 
usually given to those having the greatest likelihood or odds of survival greatest likelihood or odds of survival now, I didn't know there was such a thing but apparently that's what a triage is where the doctors actually determine by looking at the person whatever the disaster might be it might be an earthquake, it might be an attack, it could be a battlefield where there is a large number of people who need help and apparently the doctors consciously make a determination as to who, who has the highest probability of surviving if the treatment is provided to that person and they provide treatment to that person first in other words the person that they feel has a very low odds of surviving they just let him die because, because there is only so much you can do there is only so much you can do so such a process is called triage I didn't know it has such a technical definition but that's what it is a triage is, the, is a process in which the priorities are uh, given uh, are determined uh, in terms of what one feels that the patient the victim has the odds of survival the higher the likelihood that you have of surviving if the treatment is given to you then the 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 the, the, the further you will be in the line in the queue the one who has the least likelihood is the last person in the queue and of course most likely that person would not survive because he will not get a chance to get a treatment uh, here's they had to they had oh you can also use it as a verb I didn't know you could actually use it as a verb also you could also use it as a verb I just realized it because I was looking at the example I have here what can we put down the example here they they had to triage they had to triage as a verb you see the patients the patients after the earthquake and if, if the earthquake is of grave nature and if you have tens of thousands of people who need help well in that case you will have no choice but to triage but to triage so here we are using it as a verb it could be a verb or it could be a process as a noun let's move on 138 138 The next word we have is untoward. Un untoward. It's an adjective. What does it mean? It means unfavorable, unfortunate. Unfavorable, unfavorable. I hope I spell it correctly. It means unfortunate, it means negative or adverse. or improper or finally ill-mannered ill-mannered you can say that the surgery surgery had untoward side effects
surgery head on towards side effects surgery head unfortunate unfavorable negative adverse side effects so that's how it is used in the in the realm of medicine but you, the word can be used very broadly in a, in a regular sense of the word as in improper something that is improper or ill-mannered for example you might say that he made he made an untoward gesture or remark to make an untoward gesture or a remark excuse me just for one second I need to get out of the camera for a second get out of the frame for a second as you can see I have a problem to make an untoward gesture or a remark means to make a remark to make a gesture that is considered ill-mannered that is considered improper so here we're not using it in here we're not using it as in uh, unfortunate or negative or adverse effect of a medicine or a surgery or me a medical procedure but here in the normal sense of the word in English language as in improper or ill-mannered an untoward gesture, an untoward remark, is a remark that is not considered very refined, that is not considered very polished. Untoward turn of events cause him to go bankrupt. Untoward cause of event, I'm not going to write all of down. Untoward, untoward turn of events rather, untoward turn of events or untoward chain of events caused him to go bankrupt. Unfortunate turn of events, negative turn of events, adverse turn of events, caused him to go bankrupt. Let's go to the next word, 139, we need the room, where can we put it? 139 and 140, the next two words that we're going to learn are not in the book, we're going to learn them because they're related to these words. The next word we want to learn is, so these are, these are simply why don't we erase this thing? We need the room. So the next two words are related to the word that we just learned, on towards, and the words are 139 unseemly. Unseen. Unseemly. It's an adjective. What does it mean when we describe something as unseemly? Unseemly means something that is done in poor taste. Something that is done in poor taste. Not keeping, not in keeping with, with the normally accepted form of behavior. If it's not in keeping with the normal, normally accepted form or behavior, then such an action is referred to as unseemly because it's, it's considered to have been done in poor taste. Something that is inappropriate, something that is inappropriate. for time or place. If this was not the time, if this was not the place for such an action, for such a remark, then you said that such, that remark was unseemly. He called me, he called me at, he called me at, you can say, some people say, God for second or unseemly hours. God for second, God for second is one word. It's not to be hyphenated, it's one word. 
It's not only it's one word, but it's not to be hyphenated. He called me at a God for second hour. He called me an unseemly hour. He called me at an inappropriate hour. He called me. He called me at an hour that was in keeping in uh, that was at, uh, that was in poor taste. Nobody should call somebody up at two in the morning, unless of course it's a matter of life and death. Let's learn the last word, which is also related to untoward and unseemly. They are all synonyms of each other. They are all related to each other. And like I said, the 139 and 140, they are not in the book. We're, learnt, we're just learning them just for the hell of it. 140. Where can we squeeze it? We need the rooms. I'm going to have to erase everything. 140. Unbecoming. Un. Be. Come. I don't know why we're making such a big fuss about the pronunciation. It's a very simple pronunciation, obviously. Unbecoming. What does it mean when we describe something as unbecoming? Well, it means exactly as unseemly. It means unattractive. Un. Attractive. Unattractive. Or unseemly. It means it means something that detracts, something that detracts, detracting from, from one's appearance. Character. Or reputation. He used he used unbecoming language. He employed unbecoming language. That means a language that does not actually suit his personality, does that not suit his character, does that not suit his reputation. He sees he, he, he looked upon as a gentleman, and what the language that he used was very unbecoming. It did not suit him. It did not look proper on him. It, it, came, it came across very as very unbecoming. He used unbecoming language. The shawl that you're wearing is pronounced shawl. The shawl that you're wearing that you have on is quite is quite unbecoming. The shawl is quite unbecoming. The shawl that you have on is quite unbecoming. It doesn't suit you. It doesn't look proper. It doesn't look appropriate. It looks quite unattractive. It's unseemly. It detracts from you. It detracts from your appearance. It detracts from your looks. It's quite unbecoming. Now listen, there are many more words as you can see there on the second column, in the second column on page 53, this is on page number 53, and there are several words that are left there, and I'm going to leave you hanging, we're not going to do those words because they are too silly, and this will be the end of our series, day number 25, last day, it was a pleasure, and I hope that you got something out of it. And like I said before, in the beginning of the video, I reminded you, in addition to the vocabulary video that you're watching, if you need help in math, math in general, as in basic math, or if you're doing the problems from this math pro if you have problems with, if you have difficulty, if you have difficulty with any of the math problems that you will find that you find in this book, if you want to understand any concepts, they have all been solved from day number one through fifty. You can also watch T series one through one, one through eighty and you may find some of this stuff over there of some use to you. It was a pleasure. Bye now.